Good evening and welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. It is good to be with you here this evening and welcome you on this holy night. Please know if you are here for the first time or for the first time in a long time, you are warmly, warmly welcome. And all all people are welcome at God's table. When you come forward, we form a sort of oval and there's really no wrong way to get into that oval. So don't worry about protocols and all of that uh, of proper ways of doing it. Just get, get yourself up there wearing your mask and you will receive bread. And we ask you to take the bread back to your seat and consume it there. We are also coming around with a chalice for wine, but we're asking that no one drink the wine. So if you'd like, you can reverence the chalice in whatever way that suits you or ignore it entirely and simply receive the bread as sufficient communion. I also want to let you know that we are going to be fully masked with only one exception, which is during the sermon. It's impossible for me to be heard by a great many of us if I am masked while preaching. And so I just want you all to know that I have recently taken two tests that have confirmed that I am negative. And the most recent one was just about three hours ago. So and i'll be standing well away from all of you during the sermon other than that we will all be masked and um, taking care of each other in that way blessed christmas and welcome again Please stand. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful. Let the trees of the forest shout for joy at your coming, O Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have made this night to shine with the brightness of your light. Where sorrow endures, bring comfort and joy. Where division injures, bring courage and reconciliation. Where bondage confines, bring freedom and justice. In the power of your spirit, cultivate in every heart the love of your Son, born in us today. Amen. From Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we say the psalm. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For God is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O oh Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence in your presence, power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king, the one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved, will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it and let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming. O oh Lord, you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope 
and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David 
a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. At the family service earlier this evening, there was no Joseph. There were no sheep or shepherds or angel choir. At the rehearsal last Sunday for our children's godly play liturgy, all we had were three lectors, three wise women, a cow, a donkey, and Mary. Only these nine creatures were present to prepare for the proclamation of the birth of Christ. Earlier this evening, a young girl named Jojo joined us as the angel of the Lord, but the overall cast got smaller because many of our youngest members couldn't make it. They are far from alone. We sorely missed them, but in a way, here at the end of 20 expletive 21. This is kind of perfect. This tiny cast of characters around the manger. This is our good news on this night. Our younger members are telling us something. May we have ears to hear. Lyra and Pearl were self-evidently bearers of the good news. As co-teachers with me, they helped lead the godly play story itself. They were narrators. But the others in the traditional Bethlehem costumes were also gospelers. That is, they proclaimed the gospel. At last Sunday's rehearsal, the wise women, Izzy, Livia, and Rosie, came forward to see the Christ child and to present him with gifts. By doing this, they gave us an example we should move bravely forward too, giving of ourselves, opening up our minds and our imaginations in wonder and awe, striding confidently into this dangerous world, confident that we are guided by the starlight of these three young leaders. We will surely see the revelation of God's presence and power with their leadership. Yes. Coretta and Quinn in their farm animal costumes bore tidings of great joy too. Their message was this, a cow and a donkey witness the birth of the Christ child. And they witness it because God dwells gloriously as a helpless newborn in the lower level of a first century Palestinian house 
where the animals are kept inside for the night. That's where God dwells. This teaching means that there is no place on earth where God does not dwell in splendid humility. God dwells in every simple house or hut, every ordinary life, every puppy kindergarten class, every unemployment line, every COVID testing line, every classroom, every Zoom meeting, every hospital unit, every troubled marriage, every life-saving divorce, every clinic that helps women with reproductive health, every flooded neighborhood and tornado-flattened town, every detox cell and AA meeting, every birthing room and every deathbed, every single grief and joy, and everything in between that we ordinary earthlings experience. And so God dwells right here in your ordinary life, in your daily challenges and your disappointments, in your broken past and your uncertain future, in your wondrous and beautiful body made perfectly in God's image. God is here. God is with us. We are not alone and we are not left in despair. This is the good news told to us by a cow and a donkey. And of course, there's Mary, portrayed this year by Brisa. Mary had a happy or at least a bracing message for us. Brisa was the first to come up to me and ask to play a part in the godly play liturgy. She came alone. She knew not who, if anyone, would play Joseph. She did not need to know. She had her eyes on Mary, and that was enough. Bree says Mary was assertive, confident, strong, determined. She taught us to say yes to God before we know how everything will turn out. Actually, it's an even braver yes than that. Mary knows that it will most likely turn out badly before it gets better. Brisa, as it happens, is a vegan and an animal welfare activist. So she brought to her portrayal of Mary a deep awareness of how much suffering is in the world. Mary is not naive, and so we do not need to be naive either. We readily see how much trouble the world is in and how deeply disturbing and distressing everything is. We are then called to follow Brisa's Mary, to fall into line behind her as she bravely walks with determination into a challenging future, giving birth to life, giving birth to love, giving birth to authentic hope. Mary, in Brisa's insightful interpretation of the role, teaches us how to pray, not just with our words, but with our lives. There is nothing the world needs more than people who pray by engaging the world's problems head on. And there is nothing we need more than this righteous and glorious mission. Alleluia. This mission saves us from despair. And that's it. Other than the last minute edition of the angel of the Lord, there were no more portrayals in the godly play story this year. And that's where you and I come in. Which part would you like to play? The children have left several parts open for you. If you like, you could be Joseph. If you're Joseph, you are supportive, hardworking, self-effacing, and stable. You never mansplain. <laughs> in fact, you have no lines at all in the story. If you're Joseph, then you will go from here tonight determined to help others to help them give birth to things. You will help them create ministries of justice and peace. You will lift them up as witnesses for truth. You will make it easier for the Marys in your life to live out their calling. You are there to be helpful. You may be overlooked, but you might be okay with that. You're Joseph. Then there is the part of the sheep. 
If you are a sheep, you practice dependency, which is an undervalued leadership function. In a culture that values assertive leadership and can-do activism, it is all too rare to see someone simply soaking up the wisdom of a teacher or accepting leadership in a group or on a team. But when the adult Jesus is in Bethany at Martha and Mary's house, he points to this behavior and he praises it. Mary sat at his feet that day, a disciple, a student, a scholar, a person of discernment and faith. As a sheep, you can be like Mary of Bethany and go out into the world tonight as a student of life, a disciple of the way, a faithful participant who does not need to overfunction, an expert follower who does not need to be the boss, but can lead us powerfully in deep, contemplative, spiritual work. The sheep. Or maybe you're a shepherd. If so, you count and you collect people, ensuring their safety. You attend to the needs of the whole group by working around the edges. Maybe you help us with pastoral care. Often you work the night shift, or you bear other people's burdens with them as an overseer and caregiver. Maybe you bark a lot. Many dog breeds are shepherds. You might sometimes be a little annoying. This might be the part for me. You also run quickly into the city to find Jesus, and then you go and bark to others the good news. You are not reticent. You are not indolent. You work hard and you listen well. You move decisively with passion. That could be your part. Next, the really fun part. You could be in the angel choir. If you're an angel, well, you just sing. You sing to people. And the first thing you sing to them is, do not be afraid. This is always the first thing that an angel says. You sing comfort into the world. I know someone who came to his friend's deathbed and played viola for hours. He was an angel delivering a soul into paradise. But angels are intense. They are often disturbing, even scary. Or it might just be that to overflow with goodness and the music of God's peace, it's, it's just a lot. People don't always know how to respond to you. But if this is the part you were born for, well, I say seize it, get it, sing to us, sing peace and joy, sing challenge and warning, sing until we can hardly bear it and we too join in the song. And finally, there is one part that has been cast. It's not available. It's always been cast, now and always. One part we can't pretend we know how to play. The Christ child, as ever, is here. The Christ child is born in each of us, in all of us this night. Tonight we give birth to hope. We give birth to courage. We give birth to innocence and vulnerability. But also we give birth to intelligence and shrewd insight. We give birth to self-giving love. We give birth to a mother's fierce determination to mend and minister to this world. We give birth to the leaping up of life in a time of illness and sorrow and death. This is my prayer for all of us tonight, that when we gather here with our young gospelers in this room and online, we will all give hard but joyful birth to faith hope, and self-giving love come down out of heaven from God. Do not be afraid. The word of God has taken on flesh inside you yourself. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it because tonight Christ is born right here in you in me, 
in all of us. Gloria. Together, let us affirm our faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of, of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humanity. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman's womb, servant of the poor. He was tortured and nailed to a tree. Knowing full passion and deep sorrow, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will one day be known. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church. She is the spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church the world, and all to whom the angels sing. Gracious God, we pray for your church and all ministries at grace. O star of wonder, shine your light upon us. We pray for the world, all nations, and all in authority. O dawn of justice, Shine, Shine your, your light, light upon, upon us. us. We pray for the earth and for this community, island, and region. O Son of Righteousness, Shine, Shine your, your light, light upon, upon us. us. We pray all who suffer and all who are in any kind of trouble. O Beacon of Mercy, Shine, Shine your light, light upon us. We pray all who have died and for all who mourn. O fire of resurrection, Shine, Shine your, your light, light upon, upon us. us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share with one another a sign of God's peace. Again, please be welcome here at Grace Episcopal Church. All are welcome at God's table. We just form a rough oval and we come around with bread and you remain masked and then consume the bread back at your seat. And you may reverence the chalice if you like. There's really no mistake you can make in all of that. So please be welcome. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Loving and powerful God, we praise you, we bless you, and we adore you. We rejoice to give you thanks. You revealed your love for us in the newborn Christ child, your only Son. He was made flesh through your Holy Spirit, who first moved over the waters of creation and still moves over the chaos of our lives. We see in the newborn Jesus your love incarnate. Through that love, we become your children, new and vulnerable, yet full of hope for what is to come. Holy One, when your Christ was born, all the heavens burst into song and all creation cried out in joy. And so we join with mountains, winds and waterfalls, with angels and stars, sheep and shepherds, and all your children as we sing. you with wonder, creator of all who became a child among us. You walk alongside your people with love and forgive us with freedom. When we wander far from you, you are like a mother whose patience for her children knows no limit. You are like a child whose trust is freely extended to all. You lived as one of us and stayed with us through all your life, even dying on a cross. Through Jesus the child and Jesus the man, you brought us into the fullness of your life and gave us back our full humanity. On the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that he did for us, his incarnation as a child, his death on the cross, his resurrection and ascension, and longing for Christ's coming in glory, we offer you these gifts your earth has nourished and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Being born, you blessed our life. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you saved us. Christ Jesus, arrive among us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, children of your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love giver of life and father of mercy. May we receive you as little children. Bless us with new life as your people. Give us the strength and solace of your love. And in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into your joyful kingdom. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator. Blessed are you now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God, who sent the Son to take on our human nature, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of God's holiness. May God, who sent the angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the good news. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth, and earth to heaven, give you peace and favor. And the blessing of God, the one holy and undivided Trinity, be upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. 